How is quality determined? So in the previous level, we talked about uh, the different dimensions of quality. So as we look at a product that we're making, we have to figure out, okay, what is it our customers are looking for? So let's look at bottled water, for example. And if we're looking at the dimensions of quality, uh, the performance, what are we looking for from water? It needs to be refreshing. It needs to be drinkable. Uh, aesthetics, we need it to be clear looking, not have chunks of things in it. Right? We need it to con have conformance. That is, it was designed to have a certain amount of um, particulates or mineral in it, and how well does it meet that design? We don't want to have, so for example, if we look at a bottle of water, it was designed to have very little arsenic in it. Okay, 0%. And does it actually have 0% arsenic in it? So how well does it conform to how it was designed? So we know what the customer is looking for from our product based on those dimensions of quality. Now we need to look at where is quality impacted? So what are the determinants of quality? Well, first, we need to design our product. So we have product design. That's the first place where quality can be impacted. So are you designing quality characteristics into the product? Okay. So if we're saying that uh, water needs to be uh, clear and it needs to not have a salty taste, then we need to come up with a way to make water that is not going to have that. So we have the product itself, and then we have the process design. That is, now that we know we're going to make bottled water, how are we going to make that bottled water? There are different ways you can uh, create water, right? It can be water from a spring, water from a well. You can take river water and uh, clean it up. So what is your source of water? So we know that we want our water to be clear and not taste salty and have zero arsenic in it. Now we need to create a design process that is going to give us what we, what we designed our water to be. So with process design, we're gonna look at our process flow diagram and look at how we're what steps we're gonna take uh, to purify our water. Maybe we're going to use well water. So here's a schematic for a well. And what we're looking at is the steps to create drinkable water, because our product design says our water should be, should be drinkable. Okay, well, we're going to filter the water by using first uh, some big rocks, then smaller rocks, and that's supposed to pull out a lot of the particulate. So the process flow diagram is gonna show our steps. We have a schematic here that's gonna show part of the process. And what we're looking at is we're looking at fitness for use. So how well does our product do what it is supposed to? So we designed this water to be drinkable. We have a process that is supposed to follow to clean up the water and make the well water drinkable. And so when we do those steps in that process flow diagram, do we end up with drinkable water? That is fitness for use. How well does our product do what it's supposed to do? So we have creating the product itself to make sure it has the characteristics that our customers think are quality. We have the steps of our process to make sure that everything we're doing adds to the quality and not takes away. And then we have the actual production process. So everything so far has been designed. Now we're actually going to uh, be purifying our water. And when we do our actual production, does that actual production, does it have conformance? So this is the degree to which our actual good we're producing matches uh, the design. So are we actually getting what we think we're getting? 
Are we getting the clean water, the clear water, the no particulates, the no arsenic that we intended based on what the product is and how we plan to make it? So when we look at quality, where can quality be impacted? It can be impacted in what it is you're trying to make, how it is you try to make it, or in your implementation. If your process doesn't match your product design, then you don't have fitness for use. If your actual production doesn't match your design, then you don't have conformance. So when we look at a bottle of water, you'll notice that on the back it lists all kinds of parts per million for the different minerals in the water. And so what they're doing there is they are measuring conformance. Does it match the design? Well, their design would have a limited amount of different types of minerals and arsenic, the goal is 0%, and does it actually match that?